I'll be reviewing the Qantas First Class offering from seat 2A on this A380, as well as the Emirates A380 offering from seat 1F. I'm going to run through a variety of features in the two airlines offerings. First up, they're both marvellous. Different, expensive, but marvellous. You'd be happy to travel on either airline. But before we take off, let me step you back to the Qantas First Lounge in Sydney. It's large, it's stylish, has a Neil Perry kitchen and a spa. The food's top shelf and the bar is exactly as you'd expect in a first class lounge. You can see the tarmac from the lounge, the staff are friendly, efficient, and it's a great way to start your trip. But as good as this lounge is, it comes second to Emirates first class lounges here in Dubai. Now, the one I'm in right now is in Terminal 3. It runs the entire concourse here, which would be all of 200 metres. The section I'm in is remarkable. It's the size of two tennis courts. One day, I spent an eight hour layover in here, and in the whole eight hours I was here, there will be lucky to be two or three other people come in for an hour or so. Most of the time, you get it to yourself. There are two restaurants here with an a la carte menu as well as buffet offerings. There are numerous other lounges along the concourse, some serving sushi, some desserts, plus you get your own duty-free stores. There's a free shoe shine and all of the staff speak English. Oh, and you can board direct from the lounge so you don't have to go back downstairs. Unlike here in Sydney where you have to go downstairs and battle your way through the throng to get to the gate. Back on board QF7, Let's have a look at the cabin. For a start, it's ground level. Behind us is economy. Upstairs is business and premium economy. The Emirates A380, first class is upstairs. Business is behind us. Downstairs is economy and premium economy. Both cabins feature 14 suites. These are more open and have uh, a couple of storage nooks and a large overhead bin. There's a reasonable size screen here and you can even have a friend dine opposite you. On Emirates, you can close these doors and have complete privacy. There are various storage areas, your own mini bar, treats, amenities and a large screen. This seat pivots in order to turn into a bed. The Emirates seat simply reclines. There's a small lounge upstairs where both business and first class passengers can congregate. On the Emirates A380, there's this large bar down the back of the upper deck, as well as a self-serve bar in front of the cabin, and no expense has been spared. Both seats are comfortable in fully flat mode and sitting upright. I think this one's a little bit wider at the shoulders, but down the bottom end, it tapers to a V, and that tends to annoy me. This seat is the same width from top to bottom, although at the bottom of the seat, it does dip down a couple of degrees, but you can get around the discomfort by grabbing another spare mattress from somewhere in the cabin and putting it down the bottom and bunking it up a little bit. Chances are you're gonna be on this aircraft for quite some time, so you want the entertainment system to be good. On Qantas, it is good. A great collection of movies, a smaller screen than Emirates, but a great offering. This screen is impressive, and the entertainment on offer is vast, although for an English speaker like me, I think Qantas has more to offer. On the linen front, Qantas wins hands down. Simply a better mattress, a nicer doona, and even a hard pillow saves me having to bring mine when I travel. That's not to say that the Emirates linen is ordinary, it's not. It's just that this is superior. And when it comes to amenities kits, Qantas comes a very poor second. The Emirates kit has much more in it. It's better packaged, and it comes with a Bulgari perfume. Dining at 35,000 feet is always a pleasure, and both airlines offer you the opportunity to dine on demand. But the food on Emirates I've always found to be a step up. There's more on the menu, including caviar. Now, I would never eat caviar at home, but here, I just can't resist. Two serves. When it comes to wine, I'm not much chopped, but from what I've read, the wine offerings on both airlines are fine. So how do the bathrooms stack up? There's no comparison. This Emirates bathroom is an absolute cracker, and you can even have a shower. The Qantas bathrooms on the A380 are bigger than what you get on, say, 777, but they are about a third the size of what you'll experience on Emirates. Flight crew on both airlines are top-notch, although I think the staff on Qantas shade the Emirates crew, but maybe that's just because I'm an Australian. When you travel with Emirates, they'll arrange a chauffeur-driven limousine at both ends of your trip. Now, that can save you up to a couple of hundred US dollars in a city like Tokyo, and that's each way. So in conclusion, how do I rate the two products? I give Qantas 10 out of 10, but I give Emirates 11. But you be the judge, you'll enjoy both.